Election day registration will be covered in this presentation. Also referred to as EDR or voter registration. Items that will be covered are where to locate supplies, what signs should be posted, what Minnesota allows as acceptable proof of residence, who is eligible to vote, what's new in 2014, how to use your greeter list, precinct finder, and incident log, how to determine which school district ballot and voter receipt to issue, returning materials used on election day. This is a sample of a polling place setup. Some polling locations in the city of Mankato have been provided with a polling place layout. You must use this layout if provided. Your election day registration judge supply bag includes instructions, forms, supplies, and voter receipts. At the voter's request, two election judges from different major political parties may help mark the ballot. When assisting, be sensitive to their specific needs, avoid influencing how they vote, do not give advice or reveal how they voted. Direct all questions to the voter, not to others with them. Help only as much as requested. A voter may have assistance from others of their choosing. The assistant may help the voter in the polling place, including the voting booth. The exceptions are an agent of their employer cannot assist the voter. A union or candidate cannot assist the voter. An assistant can only physically mark ballots for a maximum of three voters for each election. They may provide other forms of assistance apart from physically marking the ballots. If an assistant has marked the ballot on behalf of the voter, the voter may show it to an election judge privately to confirm it is correctly marked before placing it in the tabulator. More information can be found in the election judge guide. A step-by-step -step instruction sheet to perform this task is located in the Election Day Registration Judge Supply Bag and in the Election Judge Guide. Voters registering on Election Day must provide one of the following or a combination of documents as proof of residence in the precinct. Only certain documents are authorized by Minnesota statute and rules. This list is available in the EDR Judge Supply Bag and the Election Judge Guide. To assist voters in knowing what is acceptable, post this list. To register, a person must be a U.S. citizen, at least 18 on Election Day, and a resident of Minnesota for 20 days. They must be finished with all parts of a felony sentence, also known as being off paper. A person can vote while under guardianship unless a judge has specifically revoked their right to vote. A person cannot vote if a court has ruled they are legally incompetent. This information is also in the election judge guide. A voter must be 18 to vote on election day. To vote on August 12th, 2014, a voter must be born on or before August 12, 1996. To vote on November 4, 2014, a voter must be born on or before November 4, 1996. This sign should be posted on the EDR table. The voter's oath is on the voter registration application and on the top of each roster page. Post this sign on the Election Day Registration Table. Your EDR Judge Supply Bag contains this large print sign and will be laminated. The greeter list is a copy of the precinct roster. It has all the pre-registered voters in your precinct. Before having a voter complete the voter registration application, as an Election Day Registration Judge, you must check the greeter list. If the voter's current name and current address is on the greeter list, direct the voter to the roster table. 
The precinct finder contains street addresses which are located within your precinct. Make sure the voter is at the correct polling location by verifying that the voter's street and house number is in the precinct finder, the column labeled OEB, also known as odd, even, or both, refers to the numbers within the house range. If their address and house range is not in the precinct finder, then refer the voter to the head judge who can determine the correct polling location or may call Blue Earth County Elections. Verify the document used by the voter for proof of residence. In 2014, additional items were added. The new documents include an out-of-state license, may now be used for photo and name verification only. They must also have one item from Section B, Proof of Residence. This would include credit card or bank statement, rent or mortgage statement. A voter may display a billing statement on their portable electronic device for proof of residency if they do not have a paper document. Once you have verified the voter's name and current residential address is not on the greeters list and their address is in your precinct finder, hand the voter a voter registration application. Information on this document is private data. Voters are not allowed to look at any paperwork that is not theirs. Voters must print their information clearly. Verify that 1 through 8 is completed and you are able to read the information. Make sure the voter reviews the oath before signing and dating. A power of attorney cannot sign for the voter. Only the voter signs election materials. If a voter is unable to sign the application, then have them make a mark on the signature line. The following slides will show samples of proofs of residence using a document which includes both the voter's current name and current address in the precinct. Once you have verified the voter's name and current residential address is not on the greeters list and their address is in your precinct finder, hand the voter a voter registration application. Information on this document is private data. Voters are not allowed to look at any paperwork that is not theirs. When a voter is using a current unexpired Minnesota driver's license, learner's permit, Minnesota identification card, or receipt, you will need to verify the addresses in your precinct finder, verify the photo is the person in front of you, verify the date of birth, they must be 18 on election day, verify the Minnesota driver's license, learner's permit, Minnesota identification card, or receipt is not expired. In the official use only section, write your initials, check the box, and write the number for one of the following. Minnesota driver's license, learner's permit, Minnesota identification card, or you might only see a receipt for one of the three. A receipt doesn't have to have a photo. The photo was verified to the person at the time the receipt was issued. Once you have verified the voter's name and current residential address is not on the greeters list and their address is in your precinct finder, hand the voter a voter registration application. Information on this document is private data. Voters are not allowed to look at any paperwork that is not theirs. If the voter's name and current address is not on the greeter list and they are in the correct precinct according to the precinct finder, a student identification card with the current name can be used for proof of identity along with a student housing or college list. MSU and Bethany provide housing lists. Hand the voter a voter registration application. Compare the address on the student housing list to the voter registration application. The addresses must match. In this example, you would initial, mark student ID with college list 
and include the student ID number in the official use section. Information on this document is private data. Voters are not allowed to look at any paperwork that is not theirs. Once you have verified the voter's name and current residential address is not on the greeters list and their address is in your precinct finder, hand the voter a voter registration application. Information on this document is private data. Voters are not allowed to look at any paperwork that is not theirs. A tribal identification card with the voter's current name and their current address can be used for proof of residence. Tribal band members are not required to live on the reservation in order to use a tribal identification card to prove residence. You will need to verify the date of birth. They must be 18 on election day. In this example, you would initial and mark tribal ID in the official use section at the bottom of the voter registration application. The voter's ID number, which is located on the greeter list, is needed for previous residents in the same precinct and a registered voter who is vouching for another voter who resides in the same precinct. Once you have verified the voter's name and current residential address is not on the greeter's list and their address is in your precinct finder, Hand the voter a voter registration application. Information on this document is private data. Voters are not allowed to look at any paperwork that is not theirs. A voter who changes their name or their address but still resides in the same precinct can use previous registration in the same precinct. You will need to locate the voter's ID number using your greeter list and include the voter's ID number in the official use only section as their proof of residence. In this example, initial, mark previous registration in the same precinct, and write the voter's ID number from the greeter list in the official use only section. A voter can use the notice of late registration letter. This is mailed from our office. The voter may bring this notice of late registration. The letter indicates where their polling place is. The voter must complete a voter registration application. The voter will need to read the oath, print their name, and sign the election day registration roster. In this example, initial and mark late notice in the official use only section of the voter registration application. Clip the voter registration to the notice of late registration. Once you have verified the voter's name and current residential address is not on the greeters list and their address is in your precinct finder, hand the voter a voter registration application. Information on this document is private data. Voters are not allowed to look at any paperwork that is not theirs. A voucher is a registered voter who lives in the precinct and can confirm the person registering resides in the precinct. The voucher completes the voucher form on the back of the voter registration application. In this example, initial and mark vouched for in the office use only section. The precinct list of persons vouching form is to be completed by the election judges. It is used to track the number of people vouched for by each voucher. Register voters in the same precinct may only vouch for a maximum of eight registrants. The vouching forms are located in the Election Day Registration Supply Bag. You will find the voucher's voter ID number on the greeter list. Print this ID number and the voter's name on the back of the voter registration application. On the back of the voter registration application is the voucher form which needs to be completed and signed by the voucher. Make sure the affirmation is marked. One of the three boxes must be checked. The first box is for pre-registered voters in the precinct. Print the voter's ID number found on the pre-register roster or greeters list. The second box is for a voter 
that registered on election day with proper ID and was not vouched for. They will not have a voter ID number. The third box is for employees of residential facilities. The voucher's address or the address of the residential facility must be listed and the signature of the voucher is required. An election judge must sign and date the voucher information and complete the precinct list of persons vouching form. The voter does not complete the precinct list of persons vouching form. Employees of a residential facility may vouch for an unlimited number of voters. The residential facility address must be located in your precinct. Residential facility employees are not required to be listed on the precinct list of persons vouching form. So please do not complete this form for residential facility employees. On the back of the voter registration application for a residential facility voucher, print the following. The name of the residential facility, the residential facility address in your precinct, and the voter's name. The voucher signature is required the voucher must show you identification. An election judge must sign and date the voucher form. If a facility staff list is provided prior to the election, it will be with your supplies. If no list is provided, a staff person can prove their employment at that facility by showing their employee badge. Someone who has been vouched for on election day cannot vouch for another voter. An election judge must always complete the official use only section. Section A, election judge initials. Section B, Minnesota approved documentation as proof of residence. Section C, photo ID plus document with current name and address. See acceptable proof of residence in Section B. Section D, if using a voucher, late notice, previous registration in the same precinct or student ID. Once you have verified the voter's name and current residential address is not on the greeters list and their address is in your precinct finder, hand the voter a voter registration application. Information on this document is private data. Voters are not allowed to look at any paperwork that is not theirs. The following slides provide examples of proof of residence using a combination of items from Section A and B. Section A, a photo ID must contain the voter's name and photo. Section B, must provide a current bill due within 30 days before or after the election. New for 2014 is credit card bill, banking services, rent, or mortgage payments. For bills delivered electronically, original means a printed copy of the electronic bill or a display of the bill on the voter's portable electronic device. A voter who renews, changes their address or their name, or lost their Minnesota driver's license will receive a yellow receipt. Verify the date of birth. They must be 18 on election day. Verify the paid date to ensure it is current. Verify the address is in your precinct finder. In this example, the voter is at their current address, initial mark Minnesota ID or receipt, and include the license number in the official use only section. If a voter presents an out-of-state driver's license, the out-of-state license is used for their photo and name only. They must also have an acceptable Minnesota approved document for proof of residency under Section B. Must be a current bill due within 30 days before or after the election. In this example, in the official use only section, initial, marked driver's license, document type is Excel, and photo ID number is from the photo you are viewing. A voter may also use a utility bill along with a photo ID. The voter's name must be on the utility bill. You will need to verify the address on the utility bill is in your precinct finder and the bill is due 30 days before or after the election. In this example, 
in the official use only section, you would initial, mark driver's license, and include the type of utility bill and the number from the photo ID number. A voter may also use a United States passport as their photo ID along with one of the additional proofs of residence from Section B. The voter's name and address in the precinct must be on the additional proof. The additional proof is due 30 days before or after the election. Verify the address on the additional proof is in your precinct. In this example, you would initial, mark U.S. passport, and include the type of additional proof and photo ID number in the official use only section. A voter may also use a tribal ID as their photo ID along with one of the additional proofs of residence from Section B. The voter's name and address in the precinct must be on the additional proof. The additional proof is due 30 days before or after the election. Verify the address on the additional proof is in your precinct. In this example, you would initial, mark tribal ID, and include the type or additional proof and photo ID number. A voter may use a student ID with their photo and one of the additional proofs of residence from Section B. The voter's name and address in the precinct must be on the additional proof. The additional proof is due 30 days before or after the election. Verify that the address is in your precinct. In this example, you would mark student ID and include the type of additional proof and the photo ID number. A voter may use a military ID with their photo along with one of the additional proofs of residence from Section B. The voter's name and address in the precinct must be on the additional proof. The additional proof is due 30 days before or after the election. Verify that the address is in your precinct. In this example, you would initial, mark U.S. military ID, and include the type of additional proof and the photo ID number. Even if a voter insists, do not allow them to vote in the wrong precinct. If you are unable to determine the correct location, contact Blue Earth County Elections at 304-4341. When presented with a Minnesota license, look for a status check notation in the lower right hand corner. If you see this, it indicates the voter was not a citizen at the time they applied for the license. They may or may not have become a citizen since obtaining the license. If they say they are eligible to vote, the registration or the head judge must follow the roster challenge procedures. To ensure voters have the approved Minnesota documents, use the proof of residence supplied to you. Use your precinct finder and polling location list to ensure the voter is voting at the correct location. After checking the proof of residence to the precinct finder and you are unable to determine the correct voting location, contact Blue Earth County Elections. Anyone registering on Election Day must sign the Election Day roster. Blank roster pages will be in your supply bag. Remind the voter to read the oath before they sign. They also should print their name, address, and date of birth. The voter receipts for Election Day registrations are blue. If the precinct you are working in has more than one school district, write the school district number on the receipt. This is very important so that the voter gets the correct ballot. The registration judge must initial the blue receipt after registering the voter. The ballot judge numbers all receipts. This is to verify throughout the day the total number of voter receipts are matching the number of voters on the tabulator display. Hand the voter the blue receipt. Instruct the voter to take the blue receipt to the ballot judge. Other situations that may occur at the election day registration table include If a voter challenges another voter's eligibility, the challenger completes this form. If an election judge is making the challenge, you must have another election judge conduct the challenge process. An election judge must administer the challenge process. 
sign the form, and complete the for election judge use only section. If a challenge voter is able to provide valid proof of residence and votes, complete the following steps. Have the voter complete a voter registration application and sign the election day registration roster. Make a notation on the instant log and attach the challenge form to the voter registration application. If a challenge voter chooses not to vote, complete the following steps. If the voter has already completed a voter registration application and signed the election day roster, attach a note to the election day roster. Cross off the voter's signature on the election day roster. Make a notation on the instant log and attach the challenge form to the voter registration application. If a voter refuses to answer questions, is not eligible, or refuses to sign the roster, inform the voter that they cannot vote now or later in the day. Print refused oath or not eligible on the signature line and make a note in the incident log. If a voter completes a voter registration application, signs the election day roster, and should be voting at another polling location or they were already registered in the precinct and should have gone to the roster judge, you will need to cross off the voter's name on the election day registration roster because the voter will be signing at the roster table. If not crossed off, it will appear the voter has voted twice. Put a note on the voter registration application stating that the voter was already registered and they were sent over to the roster judge. If a voter has voted twice, this information is sent to the Blue Earth County Attorney's Office and results in a police investigation for voter fraud. The incident log would be used to record anything that needs to be brought to the attention of Blue Earth County Elections. If you think you should write it down, do so. Let your head judge know of any incidents as they occur. Do not wait until the end of the day or the day after the election. At the end of the night, give your head judge the incident log. If you are fortunate not to have any incidents, write none across the form. If a voter is sent to another polling location after completing the voter registration application and signing the roster, the judge will then cross off the voter's name on the election day registration roster, make a note on the incident log to include the voter's name and details, have the voter take the completed voter registration application with them to the correct polling location, remind the voter they will need to present photo ID and proof of residence when they arrive at the correct polling location. If a voter completes the voter registration application and signs the election day registration roster but then chooses not to vote, cross off the voter's name on the election day registration roster. Attach a note on the voter registration application with an explanation of the situation. Make a note on the instant log to include the voter's name and details. If a voter completes a voter registration application and signs the election day registration roster and they are not 18 on election day, Cross off the voter's name on the election day registration roster. Attach a note to the voter registration application indicating they did not vote, but wants to register. Make a note on the incident log to include the voter's name and details. When the polls close at 8 p.m., everyone in line gets to vote. All voting is done, now where does everything go? 
Return the items as instructed on this sheet. Election Day registration judges should return these items in the completed voter registration bag. All completed voter registration applications are to be attached to the EDR roster pages. Any oath of challenge to eligibility forms and instant logs are given to the head judge to be returned in the blue bag. The greeters list contains private information such as the date of birth. All greeters lists must be returned to Blue Earth County Elections. Anything that goes out comes back to the county. Return completed documents and forms as instructed and put in the blue bag. Information that was covered in the Election Day Registration presentation included in your supply bag, you will find instructions, samples, voter receipts, voter registration applications, and blank roster pages. Signs provided must be posted. The oath, 18 on election day, and proofs of residence. The greeter list contains private data. Use your greeter list for vouching, previous registration in the same precinct, and determining if a voter is already registered. Use your precinct finder to verify the voter's residence address is in your precinct, determine school district number if you have more than one school district in the precinct, and if needed, send the voter to another polling location. Voter registration applications are also referred to as an EDR. Voter information must be legible because Blue Earth County Elections must be able to read the applications. The voter's signature is required. A power of attorney cannot sign for a voter. Never allow a voter to sign both the EDR roster and precinct roster without crossing the voter's name off of one of them. Use a red pen to cross off one of the signatures. Remember, Make a notation on the instant log. Never allow a voter to vote at the wrong precinct. Minnesota state law requires specific documentation as proof of residence to register to vote on election day. One or a combination of documents must be presented by the voter. When vouching for a voter's eligibility, the voucher information on the back of the voter registration application must be completed. The precinct list of persons vouching form includes the voucher's name and how many voters they have vouched for. The official use only section should include the voucher's voter ID from the greeters list. Unused forms are returned in the EDR judge supply bag. Completed forms are returned in the blue bag with all roster pages with the VRAs attached are placed in the designated voter registration plastic bag. All greeters lists. Contact Blue Earth County Elections with any questions.